The Bridge Pro Plus, as of right now, is really the only keyboard slash trackpad alternative to the extremely expensive Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro. The Bridge Pro Plus is $230. The Magic Keyboard is $350. So is the Bridge Pro Plus worth considering? The short answer is no, generally. The longer answer is going to be maybe if you're primarily a keyboard and mouse user, going to the Bridge Pro Plus from the mouse and keyboard won't be as terrible. But if you've been using an Apple laptop and have gotten used to all the gestures that we all love with the Apple laptop, well, you're absolutely going to hate this product. So for the rest of this review, I'm going to elaborate on those points by going deeper into the design of the keyboard, keyboard functionality, keyboard layout. I'm going to talk about the trackpad functionality, the typing experience, and I'll end it all off with a small blurb about the versatility of this product and the iPad. If you do need to skip ahead to a specific section, do check out the chapters in the timeline in the video player. And mobile reviews, eh? Monty and I base our reviews on actual usage. I love tech. Monty loves finding out the truth, so we're basically the ultimate duo of tech truth hunters out there. Seriously, who else is sick of seeing every product out there get near five star reviews? I know I am. And I'm also not interested in videos that just regurgitate whatever is on the box. Installing your iPad into the Bridge Pro Plus requires you to strong arm your device into tiny hinges. These hinges are bigger than the ones found on the regular Pro and are tougher as they are able to stop the iPad from slowly falling over at extreme viewing angles, even with the magnetic back. Lining up the edges of the keyboard with the iPad also also requires a bit of elbow grease as you have to kind of move the iPad while it's clasped down in the hinge. Now, unlike the Bridge Pro, nothing looks bent when the iPad is folded over. Now, I do have a screen protector on this iPad Pro, and as you can see, it does fit into the hinges, but it is showing a bit of wear and tear after about a month of usage. So, X day on using a screen glass screen protector with the Bridge Pro, you could go with the very thin one, I think, but based on what I've seen here with my two Bridge products, yeah, don't use it with a glass screen protector. It fits, but now one of the nice thing about this product is the viewing angles. Unlike Apple Smart Keyboard, you get to choose between zero and 180 degrees, so you can slouch as much as you want with this product. The keyboard is kept in place by four large number nubs when the iPad is folded over, and two smaller nubs when the uh, iPad is in pseudo laptop mode. The aluminum finish on this keyboard will last longer than the fabric-like finish on the Zag Slim Book Go, which is the last iPad keyboard case I reviewed. When it comes to bulk, the keyboard weighs about 690 grams, which is surprising because there's more stuff in this product, but you're still being close to the actual weight of the iPad. Actually, the iPad still weighs about 10-ish, 20-ish grams more than the Bridge Pro. Almost 200 grams more if you add the uh, magnetic back to it. I will note that this updated mag back, they finally sent it to me, weighs only 155 grams, whereas in the older version weighed closer to 180. So they've made some minor improvements in that manner, sort of. Now with all these weight measurements, well, the final consensus is that well, it's still top heavy, which is something I mentioned in my Bridge Pro review. It just feels very unbalanced when you compare it to like a laptop. More on that in a bit. When it comes to keyboard functionality, the Bridge Pro Plus connects via Bluetooth 5.0. So when you decide that this is a terrible product, you can still pair it with something that's kind of far away, like your smart TV. <laughs> Like all Bluetooth keyboards, the keyboard needs to be woken up after it goes to sleep. You need to actually press a key to wake it up. Tapping on the trackpad does nothing. And one of the neat features of the Bridge Pro was the ability to plug the keyboard into the iPad if the battery on the keyboard died. But you can't do that with the Pro Plus. That's not a deal breaker. Um, it was just like a neat fringe uh, benefit on the Pro. Uh, that I really liked, I guess, but you can definitely charge this product with the iPad if you need to in a pinch. The battery on this keyboard will last, apparently, three months with two hours usage a day. Now that's a far cry from the 12 month battery of the Pro and the 24 month battery of the Zag Slim Book Go. I'm guessing this trackpad just consumes a ton of power. Now unlike the Bridge Pro where you had to press a concoction of buttons and count the number of colored flashes to figure out how much battery power is left, on the Bridge Pro Plus all you need to do is take a peep in your battery widget on your today view. Nice! Keys are backlit with three different intensity levels and will turn off after about 30 seconds. Now these keys don't dim on and off, they turn on and off. And it gets very noticeable because you kind of see at the corner of eye if you're pondering, you know, trying to write the next great American novel. Toby Flanderson. You just kind of see it in the corner of your eye and it's just like this little light goes off and you're like, well, that's, what was that? And you have to like break your train of thought, look at it and you're like, oh, the keyboard's going off. And it's just so very, very annoying. If you're finding my review useful, consider getting all your tech stuff or even household good stuff through my Amazon links. This channel is unsponsored. Bridge didn't send me this product. I had to go get it myself. I had to wait a long time to get it. Uh, so, you know, again, reviewer, not influencer, just helping you guys figure out 
the best products to spend your money on. The Bridge Pro Plus on the 12.9 inch iPad comes with a full size keyboard, but has smaller keys than the average full size keyboard at 15.5 millimeters wide. The iPad Magic Keyboard keys are almost a full millimeter bigger, and the distance between the keys is the same. With the pseudo laptop setup, Bridge has included a set of shortcut keys that are slightly different than the regular Bridge Pro. You have A, lock button, backlit brightness, screen brightness, on-screen keyboard, keyboard language, again, odd, music controls, volume buttons, Bluetooth, and power. For me, the most useful button is gonna be the home button. That's actually something you have to use all the time because, well, gesturing isn't that great on this product. The least useful key, the keyboard language button, right in the middle of the keyboard. You know what they needed to have instead of a keyboard language key? A multitasking key. But Aaron Bridge says you can access app expose using the trackpad. More on that very, very soon. Honestly, why is there a language key? Does Bridge even know that you can easily select keyboard language by opening up the on-screen key keyboard and tapping it there? It's two taps. Sure, you can access the emoji keyboard much easier with that button, but what's gonna be more useful, accessing app expose, multitasking, or, you know, kissy smiley face. Now I know if I really wanted to, I could turn that button into a multitasking key, but that opens up another can of worms that I'm not that excited about. Okay, let's talk about the trackpad. It is so very, 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 very bad. Using the trackpad between the Bridge Pro and the Magic Keyboard is day and night. Even with Bridge's latest software update, scrolling is still chunky. The bounce back effect that we've all grown to love still feels like somebody is snapping a virtual rubber band into my eyeball. The track pad itself is larger than the one found on the Magic Keyboard, but that doesn't really make a difference because it's just still terrible to use. There's no flow when doing two finger scrolling. As you're scrolling, it feels like someone's pushing page down rather than, you know, a nice free flowing scroll. The trackpad isn't as responsive. There are sometimes random double clicks that would happen and two finger scrolling sometimes works, sometimes didn't. Overall, from a regular trackpad usage, this thing is just not that good. How about some of the higher level gesturing features with the trackpad? Is the Bridge Pro Plus any good for that? Pinch and zoom? Nope. Scrolling through your web history and Safari? Nope. Swiping up with three fingers to reach the home button? Nope. That's why I love the home button so much on the short row of shortcut keys because I can't do that with three fingers with the uh, Bridge Pro. Trackpad. Three finger swipe plus pause for app expose? Nope. Three finger left or right to go through the apps that you just previously used? Nope. But Aaron, you can set up the Bridge Pro to do all those things for you. Yeah, you can. You need to set it up through accessibility options and maybe get that same functionality, but you're only getting that functionality if you're gonna do it Bridge's way and not Apple's way. To go home, you need to tap the bottom right or left corner. To get to app expose, you need to do a quick two finger tap. And to get to the dock, you need to do a quick three finger tap. Now I'm showing you these screenshots because I couldn't get them to work on my Bridge Pro and I tried for about two days on and off. Bridge's manual is useless, their customer service is non-existent, and my Facebook message has gone unanswered. Now it's gonna be a few more days between me filming this review and finishing it. So if something does happen with all the stuff that I sent to Bridge, I'll do a quick blurb at the end of the video. And I guess that's not too big a deal because everything that I can't do with the trackpad gestures, I can do with the iPad by on the screen. But then what's the point of this product? Honestly, most of my frustration comes from the fact that I've been using Apple laptops probably for 20 years now, and I've gotten so used. I love those gestures on the Apple trackpad on those laptops. But if you've never been introduced to them, you probably won't notice a difference or care, which is why I say if you've been using a keyboard and a regular mouse to do all your computing, you're not gonna notice these shortfalls with the trackpad and the gestures. Command tab is still really gonna be your friend. But the thing you'll probably care about most is the typing experience, well, which is what we'll talk about next. Typing on the Bridge Pro Plus is better than the Pro. The buttons aren't as hard to press. Now I will say that my typing is a little less accurate with the Pro Plus when compared to other keyboards because, well, of the smaller keys. Bigger keys means bigger targets, more accurate, and buttons that aren't as hard to press, well, it doesn't require me to like finger poke rage slam the buttons when they don't work. The keyboard buttons themselves are a bit mushy. They don't have the same crisp click as Apple's keyboards do, but from my experience with iPad keyboards, they all tend to be mushy. I don't know why. I will add that the keys on this keyboard did work better than the Zaxlin Book Go that I reviewed about a week ago. When it comes to versatility, typing with the Pro Plus on a flat surface is fine. Using it on a lap isn't too bad either, except that you have to deal with the top heaviness of the device. It, it honestly always feels like this thing is, my iPad's gonna tip over. Like that. Now I will say that the Bridge Pro Plus is the only keyboard that offers zero to 180 degree viewing and will. Zero to 180. Like I love marketing fluff. How useful is a zero degree viewing angle? <laughs> like 180 degrees, yeah, I get it. Cause you can just fold it out like this and you can, you, you can use your Apple Pencil easily with it. It's, it's a little awkward, but it's still doable, but zero? 
I will say that this Midnatic back cover, I have, I actually do like it. It's useful. It protects the back of your iPad and it actually flattens out the entire back. So when you do decide to use your Apple Pencil with this product, you don't have to deal with the annoying camera hump. Now, as a side note, it took them about, I ordered this product, I think in February, and I finally got the uh, Magnetic backs, like two weeks ago, week and a half ago. It took them that long to send an updated cutout. I will say that this product is 30 grams lighter than the old version. You know, the magnets aren't as strong, but it still gets the job done. So with all those things considered, is this a great alternative to the Magic Keeper for the iPad? I don't think so. You might actually be better off just getting like a cheap USB keyboard with a trackpad. You get almost the same functionality. This is like 20 bucks, you save $180 and you basically get the same functionality. Not as slick, but it'll be as frustrating to use. Or you could just get a regular, you know, 30, 40, dollar Bluetooth keyboard this is an anchor one and then spend $150 and get an actual trackpad for it that actually works very well with the with the iPad you know those are actually all alternatives you might want to consider instead of spending $200 on this product from my perspective so that's all I got for this video questions comments leave them down there I've reviewed a ton of other iPad keyboards so do check that out first time watching one of my videos I do encourage you to click subscribe producing content a lot lately transitioning out of the isolation video series and into daily reviews till the end of July that's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching. Now, if you want a full rundown of what you can do with the trackpad, uh, do check out my trackpad tutorial for the Magic Keyboard. I do talk about third-party trackpads in that video as well, so handy information. <laughs> That's so heavy. This Bridge Pro Plus, Bridge, I'm gonna have so much trouble saying that this entire review. Bridge Pro Plus, Pro Plus. The Bridge Pro P, the Bridge PP. The Bridge Pro Plus. The least useful key, the, the least useful key, again, language, the most like the bounce back effect that we've all grown to love still feels like the bounce back effect that everybody, the bounce back effect to get the app expo expose, to get to app, uh, bigger keys means a bigger target, sorry puppy, and keys that are